Welcome to Weld.com. We're going to go through the, uh, another video on this uh, Everlast Power iMig 253 DPI. That's a heck of a title, but I'm telling you, this machine, I, the more I get into it, it's got, it's got a lot of features, and I want to go through and spend some time because I'm starting to see some really cool stuff here. The first time we shot with this, we did a, a gas metal arc welding short arc and uh, went through some settings and everything, and now we've switched it over to the pulse mode, okay? So short circuiting gas metal arc welding required the 7525. Uh, we could have used straight CO2, but now I've switched over to a 98, no, I'm sorry, 928. I always get those mixed up. 928, 8% CO2. So in the mode setting over here, it goes stick, MIG, P MIG, which is pulse MIG, DP MIG, which is dual pulse or pulse on pulse. I haven't got there yet. That's another setting. And then setup, I'm, I'm not been over in this yet. So right now we're just concentrating on PMIG or Pulse. 92.8, 8% CO2. <clears throat> now, uh, I played around here a little bit. I was on some really thin stuff because I was getting kind of excited that I could really get this thing down and concentrate. I'm, I'm not giving up on that, by the way. But uh, I've set up here about 200 amps because I want you to... I want you to see this kind of large. I want you to hear it and I want you to see it because it's really kind of cool for those of you that haven't pulsed. There are some extreme benefits to being able to pulse. It's fast, fluid, but it freezes. So for the demonstrations, I want to run a series of beads on a flat plate and make some adjustments up here so that you can see what's going on. And then I want to weld. Um, I've got some quarter inch material. I've got a lap weld. I've got a, a T-weld over here that I'll do both sides and I'll stack some beads in there. And then I'll probably uh, get frisky and do the fill passes on a horizontal groove, okay? I, I want you to kind of see how things will run in. So uh, I'm gonna get my shirt on my hood. We'll start welding here in just a second. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do a series of beads here. I've set the amperage alone and I've just, I'm leaving it at 200, but I'm gonna do a couple of trim settings here. The first one is on a 3 8 plate that I just cleaned off the mill scale. I'm gonna run the trim or the voltage setting on this. I call it trim. It's arc length. Uh, you can see what it's gonna do. You can hear it. So it's gonna be set at 3.0. And I'm gonna run a bead on that. The next one I'm gonna do is 3.5 minus, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I keep saying just the number and I need to say minus 3.5. The scale on this particular machine goes from minus 5.0 all the way to plus 5.0. So to me, when I started out and I was just setting the machine, I put it at zero. To me, the arc length was way too long. So on this particular gas, 92.8 CO2, I started turning this to negative numbers to get control and tighten up this arc a little bit. And you'll see the effect on camera. First one's at minus 3.0, the second one's at minus 3.5, the third one is at minus 4.0. Doesn't sound like a lot, but I'm telling you, these minor adjustments make a dramatic change. And then, uh, uh, I'm going to do the lap weld and the fillet weld. I believe we're going to do one of the fillet or the lap weld at 3.5 and I'll do the fillet weld at 4.0 because I want to kind of shorten that arc up a little bit and drive down into the throat of the fillet weld. I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little confusing. There's a lot to look for and to me it's you know how I set a machine. I've told you I, I look at arc features and what the weld pool is doing. I, I kind of care what's going on over here. I'm not driven by it. Okay, I can read manuals and and digest material and everything, but when I, when I pull the trigger and it, it's not something that I like, I'm going to go make an adjustment and I'm going to figure out what's going on. So it's the voltage adjustment on this. P 
PMIG, pulse MIG. Pulse requires, to me, anything over 90% argon. I know you can get up into a pulse mode, uh, a spray mode into, well, I'm gonna say 80, 80, 10, or 80, 20, I've heard, 85, 15. I don't have those gases around here. I use 95.5, 5% oxygen a lot. Right now I'm using the uh, uh, 92.8. And so we're gonna pull the trigger and make some experiment welds here. <laughs> This is 035 wire, 92.8, 200 amps, and minus 3 on the voltage, and I need to explain that minus 3. So I'm going to go make a change, and uh, we'll talk about it. first beat I ran, I had it on, the voltage setting was on three. I turned this to, my, I'm sorry, minus three, it's minus 3.5. And I'm gonna stop right there and turn it to minus four as arc length. So the settings on this machine, I believe we mentioned before, were uh, minus five, to plus five. So when I pull the trigger at zero, to me it gives too long of an arc for what I'm trying to do. I, I like this pulse spray. It's solidifying and sticking in the horizontal position. Yeah, I'm stacking beads here, but I'm trying to shorten that arc length. So I'm taking the voltage and going to more of a negative number. I'm feeling a little frisky now that I've seen this uh, pulse pull spray type this hot fast application and uh, even after running the beads I got to thinking man I could fill up a groove weld so I've got a 3 8 plate I ran a root paste uh, root pass in with short arc and I'm gonna stack it up here it's leaning over uh, probably five to seven degrees here or something uh, so we can get a camera angle on here but I'm gonna I'm gonna stack two fill passes in here in this groove and then I'll probably come back and stack three in here for a cap just to see what it'll do because I see speed application doing some nice hot work and controlling it. And that's what Pulse, that's what Pulse MIG is all about to me anyway. I mean, it's about speed and productivity. I'm, I'm dreaming about some other applications here like turning this down, outside corner joint, slightly downhill, getting some speed, some roundness and uh, keeping the heat out of it as well. So couple of things. I was using the Iron Cat thinner glove here for a lot of stuff and I'm comfortable but I'm gonna get, invest my hand up here kind of close a little bit for the camera guy. He always got me in a weird spot. Dang kids anyway. So I'm gonna get my Aerogel out of here. Get this baby on. So I should be able to kind of glide along here comfortably. Whew! Toasty. This thing cooked in here pretty good. Uh, you know, first time running this pulse on this machine. I stacked, uh, I went ahead and put a, a root in on short arc on a different machine just to get this thing prepped up. I brought it over and I ran two passes for a fill and stacked those in pretty good. They were clean. I left them and then I came back and did a three bead pass for a cap and I didn't mean to get into my first one but I got to ha having so much fun I just kind of cruised up there. I meant to leave all of the passes in there where we could see the termination of them, but I don't have um, I don't have any undercut in there, and that's good. So you know, here's the deal: pulse can be used for a lot of different things. You know, the speed it's hot, it's fluid, but it freezes. I know that's kind of a kind of a weird concept to grasp if you're not familiar with it. Uh, I did a couple of these welds, uh, different trim settings or different voltage setting, I should say, minus 3.5 on the lap weld. I did a couple of runs on there, one of them where I filled it up to the edge, the other one where I did not. I changed it to minus 4.0 and did 
both sides of the simple fillet weld. I didn't go back in and stack. Okay, I haven't cleaned anything. Uh, these I haven't cleaned. I did clean this here. I had to scratch that very last top bead there. There was just a real fine line of glass and that's where I'm going with this. There's not a lot of stuff on here to clean up at all. So ER70 S6, the nature of this gas, the pulse setting, the voltage setting, you know, you can, you can tell that this, the toe of this weld is blended in nicely to the parent metal. So things are pretty clean. I see some benefits of doing this kind of stuff. So we're going to experiment more. We're going to dive into the machine and, and figure out some settings and some applications for it. So it should be pretty educational. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some possibilities here for some fab work and some fun projects. Got to give a shout out to Iron Cat for the uh, Aerojail 9070. I like this thing hot close work up here. Camera guy gets me in some strange places here and I got to get my hand up close. Pulled out my old time 1975 snipperoos for the old wire here. I remember buying these auto parts store when I was in uh, welding school down in Oklahoma and my buddy said, you know, those needle nose aren't going to make you weld any better. And he was right. And, I, and then one last shout out to uh, Dawn at Southern Colorado Shirts. Fine products here. I hope you found this educational. I'm learning, I'm, I'll guarantee you, <clears throat> there's a lot to go through on here. I'm switching up and every little bit of change, I'm seeing something, so I need to spend some time. I wouldn't be scared, <coughs> I wouldn't be scared to, to uh, get a machine like this for doing some fab work. I'm reading on the duty cycle and it's pretty stout. I'm reading in the books on it and everything, so stick, MIG, Pulse MIG, haven't even got to the pulse on pulse or the dual MIG. Uh, it's got synergic settings for aluminum. Uh, this thing will do a lot, so we're gonna, we're gonna get into it. Hope you found this educational. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Hit that subscribe button, and thanks for watching Weld.com. I'm Bob Moffat with Cali College. Hey, I got a question. How what? Come, how come everybody gets a shout out except the camera guy? How about a shout out for the camera guy for making you Still got that on? Oh, okay. All right, let's give a shout out to the camera guy because he's doing way better now that he's uh, being put in his place. There's your shout out, camera guy. Hope you're happy. Not Hope. the same when it's for 